Okay, so guys, today, um, well, we're going shopping today, okay? This is the topic. Um, now, don't, don't uh, uh, the, the way I've decided to run this session today is uh, we're going to learn quite a lot of informal language. So we'll, I'll be focusing on the kind of language that you don't really get in course books. Uh, and also, I'm, I'm hoping to be also able to share some, some British culture with you. So certain things that are very, very typical for, um, for the UK and for London in particular. So let's start, okay? Now, guys, um, the first thing that I want to show you is um, something that may seem obvious, but it's not that obvious, okay? So uh, just for the sake of clarification, we'll spend two minutes looking at this. Um, so what I want you to do is uh, I'd like you to look at the scenarios. Okay, we have A and B. So people shopping, right? Now, can you tell me if the two scenarios are, are similar, if the shopping is, is similar, or if it's different kinds of shopping? Um, just give me D or S similar or, or, or you think differently and I say, yeah. So it's different in what sense? It's different uh, in the sense that we shop for different things. Is this the only difference or is the concept of uh, the items we buy? Okay, Sindo is saying so. Uh, so the difference is what we shop for, what we shop for, because we shop for things. So we shop for different things in the uh, in the two pictures on the left and we shop for different items, uh, needs versus wants. Uh, that's good, Christina. This is actually very good because that's exactly where the difference between going shopping and doing shopping is. Hi, Muhammad. Hi. It's got to be very, it's probably very, very hot in Saudi Arabia. Very good to have you with us. Okay. So going shopping and doing shopping. These are uh, things that uh, people use interchangeably, uh, but they are not the same, right? So which one do you think is going shopping? Is it A or B? A or B? A, that's it. It's kind of obvious, right? Um, but um, the concept of going shopping is completely different uh, from the concept of doing shopping. And what happens in English, there is very often there is the implied that. So you do the shopping. You don't go the shopping. You do the shopping uh, because we know exactly what, so, what we are going to shop for. So doing the shopping is something that we do uh, almost every day, right? And going shopping is more about leisure. And what Christina, what you said, needs versus wants, that was really, really nicely put. So we also shop for different things, obviously, that's what you said. Be very mindful of the position, we shop for different things, right? Now, and where do we shop around? In the A scenario or the B scenario? Is it A or B when shopping around? Is it A or B? Francesco is saying A, that's it. So I mean, my husband likes to shop around uh, when he does the shopping as well. But uh, hey, not everybody is like my husband, right? So we tend to shop around when we go shopping, not when we do the shopping. So this is just a little introduction, okay? Now, um, I'm going to ask you now to have a look at, I think about five or six different sentences, and it's a little test for you, okay, as always. Um, and what you have to do is you simply, in the chat, you have to say if it's A or B, A or B, like in this example, if you go to your local supermarket to buy some groceries, do you go shopping or do you do shopping? And we already know that it's B, you do shopping. So, or better still, you do the shopping. So now what I want you to do is do exactly the same. I'll be showing you sentences one by one. It's only about six sentences. And I want you very quickly to put A or B. Which one do you think is correct? So number one, 
if you are extravagant, do you splash out or economize? A or B? A or B? Give me answers. Uh, we have A, A. Hi, Mansoor, good to have you here. A, okay, every, and Natalia, everybody's saying A. Uh, if you get 10% off, do you get a discount or a deduction? Is it A or B? A, 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 everybody's saying A. If five pounds is deducted from the retail price, is the five pounds knocked off or knocked down uh, from the original price? Uh, Ashik is saying knocked down. So we have B, 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 we have B, right? Okay. If the price put on a product is way too high, is it a tear off or a rip off? And just to clarify, so this is tearing, okay? And ripping looks slightly different. This is a rip in your clothes, right? So is it a tear off or a rip off? Everybody's saying B. Now, if you spread the cost of your purchase over six months, do you pay up front or do you pay in installments? A or B? Uh, B, 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 everybody's saying B. If you buy many items in a short period of time, do you go on a shopping spree or do you shop around? Is it A or B? A, 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 everybody's saying A. And almost the last one, if you buy something that's a real bargain, do you say it's a steal or do you say it's a rob? A or B? B, 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 yeah, we have Bs most of the time. And the last one, if a product is on sale in the UK or for sale, because in the United States it's slightly different, is it cheaper than the original price? A or B? Yeah, oh, sorry, yeah, it's yes, sorry, it's yes or no, thank you. So yes, you think it's yes. So if a product is on sale or for sale, it's cheaper. Yes, but tricky, Monster is saying yes. Okay, so now we are not going to answer these because that's um, part of what is going to come up in, in the um, slides that we are going to look at. So at the end of the session, we'll just come back to this slide and um, make sure that we got the right answer. So let's look at the first slide, okay? And it's going to start easy again, progressively, hopefully more difficult. So we have two shops. Uh, don't worry, we are not going to be spending time talking about uh, department stores or supermarkets because that's what you can see, right? So we have John Lewis. Are you familiar with John Lewis in London? Because that's my favorite department store. So we have um, John Lewis in Oxford Street and we have Sainsbury's, right? Sindo is saying, no, John Lewis is a really good one. You know, uh, Christina knows, yeah. So once you start shopping at John Lewis, you'll be loyal until you die, okay? That's how it is with John Lewis. Um, so, um, we have a department store and we have a supermarket. So when you go um, to, why, why do we go to a department store? We go there uh, to shop for just about anything, right? Uh, Christina is saying Christmas outfit. Yeah, I really, I mean, John Lewis is really my favorite uh, department store. So when I go to uh, John Lewis, I go there to shop for just about anything. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we had a session on colloquial expressions and everyday expressions. So I'm going to throw in a few everyday expressions and highlight them uh, for you. So we use this just about, right? It's a very nice expression that people use uh, in English and it means nearly or practically, right? Like it just about anything, practically anything, uh, nearly anything. So going to John Lewis means shopping for just about anything, right? But if you go to a supermarket, you shop for food and household items. So this is the difference, right? Now, the thing about um, John Lewis and department stores is that because you shop for just about anything, right? Um, 
you name it and you are going to get it in a department store. This is another beautiful phrase, um, everyday language, everyday communication. Uh, you name it and you'll get it in the department store. Like if you come to London, okay, you name a nationality and you are going to meet someone of this nationality from that country because London is such an international place. So you name it and you'll find it, you'll get it. So going to a department store, you name it, you can get just about anything, okay? And John Lewis is no different. So um, you can buy anything from, I don't know, clothing to haberdashery. Have you, do you know this expression? Do, or do you know this word, haberdashery? Have you ever seen this before? What's haberdashery? No, Lina is saying. So haberdashery, believe it or not, but um, there are still uh, shops, no, everybody's saying no. So haberdashery, be mindful of the stress. It's not haberdashery, but haberdashery, the stress is marked, it's on the first syllable. It's essentially selling uh, things like threads, buttons, ribbons, fabric materials. So everything that you need for sewing, okay? But it's a, such a lovely word, okay? And uh, I, yeah, so I thought maybe I should also include it here. So uh, you name it, you get it in every single department store, okay? Including haberdashery. Now, if you go to a supermarket, right? You go um, to shop for food, then you go there to pick up some food. This is another phrasal verb that we often use, colloquial language. So um, I often say to my husband, on your way from work, can you go to the supermarket and pick up some tomatoes maybe? So pick up some food, just, um, just a nice expression again. Instead of buy, we say pick up some food, yeah? Okay, now, um, another thing that I want to ask you is um, we have this department store and we have a, um, a supermarket, but guys, do you really think that these places are the best places to bag a bargain? Is I mean, when you think of a department store, is it a good place to bag a bargain? And I am drawing your attention to the pronunciation of the word bargain. It's not bargain, it's not bargain, it's bargain. So if you are there, okay, you can just say it to yourself, just say it a couple of times, yeah? So bargain. So is it a good place to bag a bargain, to bag a bargain? It's not, Francesco is saying, you are all saying it's not. But there are times when you can actually bag a bargain um, at some, uh, and uh, in a supermarket. I mean, there are certain times when it's possible, right? So when can you snap up a bargain? At John Lewis, for example, when can you snap up a bargain? When can you bag a bargain in a supermarket? Okay, no. okay we're talking about sales. So there are times when you can't uh, snap up a bargain. Never, Cindy, no. If you go to John Lewis, believe me, okay, Christmas time, you can really bag quite a few bargains, okay? They really have beautiful sales. So you can't snap up a bargain. You can't bag a bargain if you go to John Lewis in December. So it's possible. But now, um, before we move to some more serious stuff, I want to clarify this one thing for you, okay? Because um, that's also very, very confusing for some students. So, uh, so when we talk about uh, bagging a bargain, we talk about discounted items, right? So uh, to bag a bargain is to buy a discounted item. Now, let's look at sale here. Now, to bag a bargain, okay, does it mean to buy something that's on sale, for sale, or in the sales? Which one do you think is correct? Which one would you use? Would you say that uh, you managed, you snapped up a bargain, you got something on sale, you got something for sale, or you got something in the sales? 
sorry, it was my phone. What would you say, you personally, which one would, would be your, your answer here? Give me two or three answers. So Ashik is saying in the sales, Maddy is saying on sale. Give me two more. I want to see um, um, where you are in terms of this noun sale. Sindo is saying on sale and in the sale, says Christina. Okay, so so the thing here is um, in, in, um, in Britain, in the UK, okay, um, we tend to say in the sales. So when we talk about sale, uh, it's the period when everything is discounted. And we talk about buying things in a sale or in their sales because sale is a countable noun. So that is the very British expression. But in America, uh, if you say that you buy something on sale, it's exactly the same. What's more, in, in the UK, some people also refer to um, or to buying, to, to bugging a bargain as getting it on sale. So it's possible to say it in England, but, but I'd like you to um, look at this, okay? Two scenarios. Look at this uh, house and look at this car. So the house is for sale and the car is for sale. Now, are these discounted? Are they cheaper, you think? Do you think this house is not? So when something is for sale, what are you saying? You are saying that it's available and it's purchasable. So you can buy it, it's for sale. It doesn't mean that it's cheaper, right? Now, the same goes for on sale, okay? So look at this. Do you remember, okay, um, Harry's book Spare when it came out, okay? It, um, it was supposed to be on sale on a particular day, I don't remember when, but then in Spain, something, something went wrong, there was a glitch of some kind, and the book went on sale uh, prematurely to, I think, a day or two days before it was due to go on sale. Imagine that you want to um, see your favorite rock band and tickets go on sale tomorrow. So when you say that something is on sale, are you saying that it's cheaper here? Are you saying not? So again, in England, okay, something when you think of Christmas, when you think of sales, we tend to say in the sales, but you get to hear people saying on sale as well, because it's, it's the American influences. However, you have to be very careful because on sale often means uh, available to buy. It does not necessarily mean that it's cheaper. So I just wanted to clarify this for you as well. So. Um, so these two means available. So in the sales means that it's cheaper and it's probably because it's end of season, end of line. Now, discounted items are not necessarily in the sales. They could just be faulty or damaged yeah, items. But how about bog off? What does it mean when something is a bog off and it's a special offer? Have you heard this expression before? Can you get a bog off uh, in a department store. Anybody? I can see that nobody is familiar with that then. Okay, you can't, okay. So bog off stands for buy one, get one free. So buy one, get one free is typically in, yeah, buy one, get one free, that's it. So in short, bog off. And that means that uh, you can buy, I mean, it's typically for supermarkets, right? And it means a special offer. So this is how you can snap up a bargain, you can, you can bag a bargain, okay? So these are collocations with the noun bargain. Okay, let's move on. So uh, we are done with department stores, we are done with supermarkets. And now let's go thrifting, okay? So let's go thrift shopping. Now, have you ever been thrifting? Anybody, have you been thrifting? Have you ever 
um, gone thrift shopping. Sindel, you seem to know a lot about, no, Nadi is saying. Um, okay, what does it mean when you go thrifting? Does anybody know? What do you buy when you go thrifting? Anybody? Uh, no, just give me an example. What can you buy when you go thrifting? What do you buy? Nobody knows, right? Okay, so when you go thrifting, you we are talking about sustainable shopping. So when you go thrifting, you buy second-hand items. But I don't lie at uh, this expression, second-hand, and many people don't. We like to refer to second-hand items as pre-loved items. And thrift shopping in London is um, it is a huge business, choosing old items, and that's it, Nadi. So thrifting is a craze. It's very, very, very popular, okay? In the UK, that's part of, a, of the culture, really. And London is exceptional in this respect. People go thrifting a lot, okay? It's the concept of sustainable shopping as well. So we are going to talk about thrifting um, a little bit, okay? Now, when you go thrifting, okay, uh, what can you buy when you go thrifting? Can, can anybody just give me an example, a random example? So buying pre-loved items, buying secondhand items, what can you buy? I don't know if you have the same clothes as Sheik is saying. Okay, anything else? Shoes, Roxanne, that's it. But good, gadgets, furniture, that's it. So again, to, to use, yeah, to use uh, the same expression as before, you name it, okay? You name it, you can get it in a thrift shop. So in London, um, there are hundreds of thrift shops, right? So you could go to vintage shops, uh, clothes, books, furniture, like, Different items are grouped in different shops, but they are all thrift shops. So you name it and you can buy whatever you want in thrift shops. Uh, now, there is a certain very, very particular kind of thrift shops, uh, shops in London. Sorry. OK, um, so we have um, these shops. Have you ever uh, been, have you ever shopped at any of these? Do you know what they are? So it's the British Heart Foundation, Cancer Research, Oxfam. What's the name for these shops? They are thrift shops, but they are very, very particular thrift shops. We call them, that's it, Christina. We call them charity shops. The difference between um, regular thrift shops and charity shops is that charity shops, the idea is for them to raise money for a charity. So uh, in, in, uh, in Britain, in England, this, uh, there are hundreds of charity shops as well. So if you go to a thrift shop uh, that's privately owned, then obviously the profits go to the owner. But when you shop at charity shops, you support the charities. So you go thrifting, but at the same time, you support a given or selected charity. It could be the Cancer Research, it could be um, Health Africa, it could be British Can uh, Heart Foundation, anything. Again, you name it, okay, and you can choose the charity that you want to support. Now, I wonder if um, if you have a similar project in your countries, because as far as I know, there is no such thing in Italy. I don't know about India. I don't know about Saudi I, uh, Arabia. I don't know about Myanmar, but it's a lovely, lovely thing. And, uh, and it's well loved, not at all, Christina, yeah. And it's a shame because, uh, Hundreds of people support charities this way. We have some stores, as Sheik is saying. Good. So all these are thrift shops. Now, another way of thrifting is this. Any idea what these are? Um, 
Oh, Christina is saying you have some thrift shops. Oh, okay, but not charity shops. Okay, so that's good. Yeah, the, you know, the concept of thrifting is actually um, very, very popular at the moment for many reasons, uh, but we are not going to go into the reasons, maybe in one of the speaking clubs, but not today. Now, we have two more ways of shopping in the UK um, to do with thrifting so what do you think is number three so we have thrift shops we have charity shops what is this because that's very british markets okay but okay but uh what kind of an open market it's not it this is not just an open market um a lot of thrift shops roxana is saying mm, good sindo is saying but the pronunciation is not quite right okay so this is a flea market. Very good. It's a flea market. Sindo, have you been to, it's a flea market. Yeah, Christina, but flea like this, trafficking. Trafficking, oh, no, no, not trafficking. So the a flea market is another way of uh, thrifting, right? So all the items are just laid out on stalls or on the ground okay and there are some lovely lovely flea markets in london i i love flea markets and the last one okay what do you think is this then i can see that uh, christina and Cindy are familiar with uh thrifting so this is the last idea for thrifting in the uk what is that so we have a flea market, we have a charity shop, we have a thrift shop, um, Sindo St. Notting Hill, yeah, I prefer Liverpool Street, you know, Petticoat Lane, this is a better flea market, I think. Now, the last one, what's that? It's not bidding, Ashik. Look, what do you see? Do you see cars? This is a car boot sales. Very good. Now, so here, people sell things straight out of the boot of the car so another very typically on saturdays and sundays very popular if you go to a car boot sales uh event you uh you have to go early in the morning and you'll see hundreds of people i mean these sales are are very 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 popular so um why do people like um all these ways of shopping why do people like thrifting why do they like vintage shops why do they like car boot sales and flea markets so here are a couple of reasons because you can get real gems right you can get one-off items one-off meaning nobody else is going to traditional items sindo is saying very good so antiques and I particularly like this expression one off. So when it's a one off, nobody's going to get it. It's you are the only one because it's not mass produced. Right. And very, very, again, something very trendy in the UK, upcycled furniture. Um, upcycled furniture, meaning you buy an old chair, for example, and you upcycle it so the quality is better than um, when the chair was actually new. This is a trend in, in the UK. People buy furniture for upcycling and they buy upcycled furniture. Um, and, um, and you can get them when you go uh, through shipping. Now, last week, we had a lesson on um, future forms and I never got to the point when I could introduce this particular phrase to you. So I'm going to take this opportunity to do it now. So thrifting is a lifestyle, if you will, or as it were, you could say. So um, thrifting is a lifestyle. Now, when I say that thrifting is a lifestyle, do I mean that it is a lifestyle or am I speaking figuratively? So um, to answer your question, okay, I'm not even waiting for your answers. 
I am speaking figuratively because thrifting is not a lifestyle, right? Thrifting is just a way of shopping, so it's not a lifestyle. But if you allow me to say it this way, I could say thrifting is a lifestyle, as it were, if you will. So we use these expressions, okay, to say that it's not actually a lifestyle, but speaking figuratively, uh, that's what it is. And if you allow me to express myself this way, then, um, well, thrifting is a lifestyle, okay? So this is for those um, who are really interested in, um, in fluency and everyday expressions, if you will, as it were. Very, very nice expression. I'll try and use it later as well to give you another example. Okay, so we've already visited a department store. We've been to a supermarket. Now, we've done some thrifting, okay? So let me tell you about my thrifting experience. By the way, have you thrifted something nice in your life? Have you ever thrifted something nice? Give me a yes or a no. Yes, yes, yes. Most of, yeah, most people really. Yeah, Sindo said no. Oh, Sindo, you're behind, you're falling behind. You have to kind of keep up with the changes and with the new mentality. Pottery in the UK, Christina is saying, yeah. Okay, so I have as well. And to show you, Christina, this is what I thrifted quite recently. What is it? Could anybody uh, tell me what this is? What do you think this is? Anybody? Okay, I'll tell you what it is. It's not a vase, Christina. It's a planter. It's a plant. It's a it's a plant pot. It's a planter. So this is for my plants. Okay, I love planters, and that's what I thrifted quite recently. I also thrifted lovely silver bookends the other day. Uh, baked clay things, not quite Francesco, but yes, I liked the idea. I really liked the idea. So this is what I thrifted recently. Now when I got home. Okay, my husband asked me this question. He asked me, so what was the damage? What do you think he was asking? What was he after? What was he asking me about? I got home and I showed him this and I said, look, okay, this is what I managed to thrift today. And that was his question. What was the damage? That's it. So Christina is saying the price and money. So what's the damage? Now, I only paid, I can't remember how much I paid, but I didn't pay a lot of money. So what do you think, uh, what do you think, uh, sorry, what do you think I said to him? Did I say that I paid, uh, that the price was exorbitant? Did I say that the price was astronomical? Did I say it was pricey? Or did I say it was chinzy? Okay, Ashik is saying pay peanuts, okay? But how about if you were to choose from these four? So exorbitant, astronomical, pricey, or chinzy? Which chinzy? That's it. So chinzy means very, very cheap. So my answer was, well, uh, I only paid however much. It was really chinzy. It was chinzy. It's an adjective, right? So. Um, Ashik, now, so did I pay through the nose? Did I pay peanuts? Did I pay a kingly price or did I pay an arm and a leg? Which one is it? What did I say to my husband or what comment did he make? Did I pay through the nose? P good, pay peanuts. So only chintzy and pay peanuts mean cheap. All the other ones mean pay a lot of money. So when you pay through the nose, you pay a lot. When you pay an arm and a leg, that's very, very common. You pay a kingly price. It was so expensive, right? And obviously exorbitant and astronomical. So I said to my husband, look, it was a real cheapo. Okay. It was chintzy. It was a real cheapo. To which he said, oh yeah, it's actually, it's a steal. And by saying it's a steal, he was saying it was so cheap that it's unbelievable, okay? It was dirt 
cheap. So here we have the different ways of how to talk about um, when something is cheap or expensive um, using slang or colloquial expressions, right? It's a steal is quite common. Pay an arm and a leg is quite common to say that you paid a lot of money. Dirt cheap is a strong collocation and it's a cheapo, very, very slang. OK, so very, very colloquial. So what was the damage? I said to my husband, don't worry. OK, um, it was a real cheapo. You don't want to know. OK, so um, that's that. Now, the thing about um, thrifting and going to thrift shops and mark flea markets and car boot sales in particular is this. When I went, oh, come on. When I went uh, thrifting, uh, that was when I got my lovely planter, okay? That lady said to me 20 pounds, okay? To which I said, I'll give you 10. To which she said, 15, okay, and I said, deal. Now, what is this action in English? What do you, what's the word for this? Because obviously that's not something you can do uh, when you shop at John Lewis, but you can do it when you go to a flea market or when you go to a car boot sales. What's the, what's the verb? What is happening in this picture? Very good, haggle, very good, haggle, Maddy, haggle, yeah, very good, Sindo. So you can haggle. And I haggled and I managed to get the lady to knock off a few pounds from the original price. So when someone knocks off money from the original price, it means that they reduce the price. And this is another slang expression, phrasal verb very common but just be careful because most of this language is very very colloquial okay i'm not teaching you i'm not um presenting really any language that you find in course books this is colloquial this is how people speak um on a daily basis i would say like day-to-day -day conversations so the lady knocked off a few pounds for me and this is how i backed my bargain right that was that was what happened so what happens is when you go thrifting you get to buy things for a fraction of the retail price so we talk about a retail price and a fraction of the price is a nice expression and it means really really cheap i paid a fraction of the price for my planter really uh, i would have had to pay a lot of money, um, John Lewis, I'm sure, and I just paid peanuts. It was a real cheapo. It was a steal. And also, do you remember when we had a masterclass on the phrases with get? Okay, so uh, I hope you can see this. You get to buy things. You have an opportunity to buy things if you go thrifting, if you go to flea markets. Yeah, Lina is saying yes, yes. So, um, so that's that. So we've done some thrifting. Uh, we've been to a department store. Now let's change the scenery altogether. This is now in stark contrast to thrifting. Now, what do you see in this uh, um, in this picture? In in the two pictures, really. What do you see? I don't know how many of you have been to, to the UK uh, and London in particular, but I wonder how you are going to define these, these two sh um, shops. What are they? What do you see? Anybody? Okay, so you should really corner shop. Oh, Christina, you know too much. Food and grocery, good. So I was expecting, um, news agents because that's what it is but uh we don't really call it news agents we call um shops like that corner shops and it's not really a street market this is a corner shop they are corner shops now it's a huge part of the british culture as well i can't even imagine uh london without corner shops to be honest so 
what defines a corner shop? Christina, you can help me. So corner shops are small shops, okay? So keywords, very important. Uh, okay, side of the road, yes, but the location, Christina, that's it. So they've got to be in the residential area. So uh, a corner shop is typically a shop that's within walking distance from your house. So you don't have to go to a supermarket, right? So residential area, limited selection, uh, and stay open until very late. So this is the idea behind a corner shop. Now, what can you buy in a corner shop? Christina, or anybody for that matter, what can you buy there? Why would you go to a corner shop? I mean, we have supermarkets, we have department stores, we have all this. Why would you go to a corner shop? What for? What would be, what would be to browse? Day-to-day -day things, Ashik is saying, that's it. So we don't go to a corner shop to browse, okay, to look for things, to pick and choose. We go there with a purpose. So when I go to a corner shop, it's because I have one or two things in mind that I want to get, and that's all I want to get, because I know that I'm likely to be ripped off. So, uh, and that's also part of the culture. If you shop um, in corner shops, okay, then you are paying more than you would be paying in a supermarket. So you are likely to be ripped off. Uh, you'll be paying more uh, for each product that you could get, I don't know, much cheaper in a supermarket, just like Okay, when you, for example, go to uh, Heathrow Airport and you want to buy some money, exchange some money, don't ever do it at the airport because they will rip you off, okay? The exchange rate is always very, very, very bad, very high. And I just saw this the other day and I thought this was lovely to show students, you know, the use of a ripoff as a noun. London became such a ripoff, right? A ripoff. So when you go to a corner shop, you are likely to be ripped off. So we only go there for a purpose. We go there to buy daily things. We often go there to just buy fags and booze. Okay, to use the colloquial language. So fags are cigarettes and booze is alcohol. Now, off license means selling alcohol. Often students ask me, teacher, teacher, what does it mean off license? All the shops have this. It means that you can buy alcohol there. So you can also pay your bills, okay? And you can buy a lottery ticket and you can top up your Oyster card. So a corner shop, Okay, a corner shop is um, what I want to say, again, to use this expression, the corner shop is almost like an institution in Britain, if you will, or as it were. So if you allow me to say this. So um, the corner shop is almost as it were an institution. Okay, it's almost an institution, if you will. Uh, it is such a huge part of the British culture. Now, typically, um, the owner of a corner shop will go to a supermarket to buy in bulk. Okay, so buying in bulk. And then they sell uh, the same stuff um, at a higher price in their corner shop. And this is why people get ripped off. Now, have you ever bought anything in bulk? Have you ever bought anything? Yes, Maddie is saying. Okay, yes. I think, if, yeah, veggies, Ashik is saying. Do you remember toilet paper under uh, the COVID pandemic? I mean, people were buying toilet paper in bulk. So, um, I mean, I did. My husband did because there was so much panic. It was so silly, but that's what people were doing, buying in bulk. Yeah, very good. So now we've been uh, thrifting. We have visited a corner shop. Now let's look at another scenario. Let's go on a shopping spree and let's do it 
fast because I have um, a couple of tests for you in a minute. So going on a shopping spree, who goes on a shopping spree? Typically, who goes on a shopping spree? Shopaholics, right? And when you go on a shopping spree, you shop till you drop. And I'm sure you know this expression. So this is a typical shopping spree, okay? Or maybe the aftermath. So when you go on a shopping spree, okay, you buy a lot in a very limited, that's it, Cindy, binge shopping or the shopping bonanza, you know, like at Christmas, for example. So going on a shopping spree um, is buying a lot, but within um, a very, very limited time period, okay? So you go shopping, it could be a couple of hours, half a day, or even a day, and you come back with hundreds of bags. Now, when we go, uh, when we go on a shopping spree, do we typically go to high street stores or high-end stores? What do you think? High street stores or high-end stores? So what we have here is high street stores are typically associated with fast fashion and exclusive luxury goods. So high street stores are the likes of Zara and Topshop and I can't think of any more, but uh, where do we typically go? High street stores or high end stores when we go on a shopping spree? Okay, unless you are minted, so unless you roll high end, Ashik, no, I don't think so. Unless you are minted. If you are minted, if you roll in it, if you have a lot of money, if you are a millionaire, you can go on a shopping spree and you shop in high end stores, you know, because that means that you pay a lot for individual. I, I mean, I don't know. I've never done it. I'm not minted. So for me, a shopping spree is just fast fashion, really. So regular shops, shops I can afford. But, but sometimes, sometimes, occasionally, uh, we feel, and I feel the same, okay? We feel like we have money to burn, right? I mean, don't we all feel that way? Like sometimes we feel like, yeah, Ashik is saying, it's not like I have money to burn because I don't, but sometimes I feel like, oh dear, I want to spend more money on something that I don't really need. I, I, that's it, Lina. So what we want is we want to pamper ourselves. Yeah, don't confuse pampering with pampers. So, um, Sometimes we just want to pamper ourselves, yeah? We want to indulge. We, we, we just, we have some money to burn. We want to spoil ourselves with say a designer bag or we want to treat ourselves to a designer bag. Maybe because we are feeling down or maybe because we feel that we deserve it because we've achieved something big. So then, we decide that we have some money to burn and we decide to splash out on a designer bag, right? So when we splash out, we spend a lot of money. When, uh, or when we have money to burn, we spend a lot of money on things that we don't really need. So have you ever splashed out on anything? You guys, have you ever felt like you had money to burn and you wanted to treat yourself to something nice? Have you had this experience, not necessarily going on a shopping spree, but just, you know, maybe by Natalia saying, yes, for clothes, of course, we all have this urge, right? But now to teach you more colloquial uh, language, uh, just, to, yeah, that's true, Mervat, uh, absolutely true. But I still think that we all, you know, occasionally feel that we want to splash out and we want to kind of have some money to burn and to treat ourselves to something very nice. But look at this guy, okay? Look at him. Now, do you think that this guy will ever splash out on anything? Do you think this guy will ever pamper himself or treat himself to something nice? No. Do you know why? Uh, just, I'm going to teach you something, but be, okay, Lina, stingy, that's it, mean, that's it. I'm going to show you um, 
a, an expression, a noun, okay, that is very colloquial. It could be offensive. It's not that offensive, okay, um, but it could be. So you have to be careful how you use it. He is such a cheap skate. So when someone is a cheap skate, uh, it means that they always, we often refer to people who we know always go for the cheapest option. So they go on holiday and they book the cheapest hotel. They go to a restaurant, that's it. Uh, penny, yeah, penny pincher, penny pincher, Christina. Yeah, so they, yeah, my uncle. Yeah, we all know people like that. I mean, look, um, it's, a, it's a lifestyle as well. So we mustn't judge, but um, when you refer to someone as a cheapskate, it's derogatory in a sense. And what you're saying is that these people will never pay an extra penny for anything that they don't have to. They always go for the cheapest option. So this guy must be a real cheapskate, okay? And I don't think he's ever splashed out on anything. Good, now let's move on and let's look at another scenario. This is the last scenario and then we are going to have some, um, some quizzes. So, um, sometimes we find ourselves in the situation, I mean, I don't know about you, uh, but definitely uh, that, that, that works um, with me like that. So um, we find ourselves in the situation where we would like to buy, we, we'd like to splash out on something, we'd like to pump ourselves, we'd like to buy something special, like uh what what's this what's in the first picture like say kitchen appliances right or a fancy car or maybe some you know really fancy hi-fi so we want to buy something bigger not just clothing or books um and okay it's good if you are well off right um if you have a lot of money you can afford it you can just go to a shop okay pay and you get it but very often okay you okay if you are well off okay to go back to this expression that we had in the previous masterclass it's a little bit of a revision you can also buy all this on a whim just like that because you are so minted because you roll in it because you have so much money you may just, uh, I don't know, in the morning over a cup of coffee, decide to buy a new hi-fi system, just like that, on a whim. And you, you, you don't even need it. So it's good if, you, if this, these are your circumstances. But most of us, most of us are on a tight budget and we can't pay up front. So we can't pay up front. We are on a tight budget. Then what happens next? OK, if this is the case, imagine that uh, you are on a tight budget. You can't pay up front, but your washing machine has just died. Look at this woman. What is she going to do? She can't just fork out the money. Um, forking out the money means paying up front, paying a lot. And very often, very often, uh, you are not willing to pay, okay? You do it reluctantly. So this woman is not even prepared to fork out the money. She doesn't have the money. So what happens in the situation like that when you are on a tight budget, you can't pay up front, but you want a new hi-fi system. This woman needs a new washing machine. How do we then buy things we take out alone, right? That's it, borrow. Okay, so we take out a loan. That's how we um, how we kind of express this in English. So you take out a loan, you ask for a loan and the shop can give you a loan and then you have to pay it off in installments. So when you pay, when you buy something in installments, the cost is spread over however many months and many people do that, right? They take out a loan and they pay in installments. So this woman can buy the washing machine uh, in installments. Now, don't, don't confuse this with buying a house because buying a house is taking out a mortgage, not a loan, okay? It's slightly different. So this works for all other things, but not a house. For a house, you take out a mortgage 
for other things you take out a loan and you buy it in installments. But one last thing before we move on to the quizzes. If you are really, really, okay, hard up, like really broke, completely broke and well, a bit hard up, but you know the understatement. When people say, mm, I'm a bit hard up at the moment means I'm completely broke. So if you are in a situation like that, the shop may not even offer you installments. They may not give you installments. So that option is off the table for you. What can you do then? Uh, there's another shop um, in in England that you can go to okay it's not it's called a pawn pawn like the chess you know um pawns it's called a pawn shop mindful of the pronunciation please so this is the long sound okay it's pawn it's a pawn shop and when you go to a pawn shop uh you leave your belongings and you take the money from the pawnbroker. So for example, you need to buy this washing machine, you are completely broke, okay, nobody is going to give you any installments, then you take your watch or your wedding ring, you go to a pawn shop and you leave your ring there, you get the money and then you can come back and buy the ring uh, from exchange for money that's it so you can buy it back but it's going to cost you more money and if you don't have the money then the pawn broker is going to resell it to someone else so um so we have pawn shops in you must have pawn shops uh, you can give a lay you can give a lay away lay away what's that um sindo old washing word okay well we'll come back to this then okay because you confused me now so upon oh to let in deposit okay okay so yeah i mean i've never visited a pawn shop i well i hope you'll never have to ashik because uh i wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy right like you wouldn't wish it on anybody um, okay, guys, so we have visited different shops, okay? Now, let's do a little quiz. Let's see how much you remember, okay? We're going to run over by maybe five minutes. But... So first of all, what I want you to do is I'd like you to find opposites, okay? So um, what's, uh, what's the opposite of, have a look at these words and tell me, um, like, say, bargain. What's the opposite of bargain? Um, let's start with the easiest one. So buy in bulk is the opposite of what? Just give me the number. One, two, three. Buy in bulk is the opposite of number four. That's it. So you, it's the opposite of buying single items. Uh, Pre-loved items. Pre-loved items. What's the opposite? Uh, number five, that's it. How about to be on a tight budget? What's the opposite? Number two, to splash out, that's it. How about to pay a kingly price? Number eight, that's it. How about a cheapo? Number seven, that's it. How about a ripoff? Number one, that's it. Uh, how about economize? Opposite. Uh, number three, and how about discounted good? So we have a retail price and a discounted price. Now, let's look at some collocations. Bargain, uh, um, disagree. Disagree, Ahmed, uh, bargain. Bargain and a ripoff, these are the opposite. Yeah, okay. So now, do you remember the collocations here? Okay, so what, how did we use um, dirt? Dirt what? Dirt. 
I'm helping you here. So something can be dirt cheap, very good. And it means very cheap. It's a steal. It's dirt cheap. How about a bargain? Number? Number? Number a bargain? No, you can bag a bargain. That's it. And it's the same as a uh, snap up a bargain, bag a bargain, and you pawn your belongings. And now, guys, let's look at some phrasal verbs. Okay. So we had all these verbs, and we have three, uh, we have three uh, prepositions. Now, let's do it together. So knock. Knock off, that's it. Uh, and maybe well, we can also find, um, okay, so knock off what? Knock off an amount from, oh, sorry, an amount, oh no, sorry, hold on, because I'm being messy now. Let's just do the phrasal verbs first. So knock off is the first one. Next one, rip off, someone is saying, good. Pick, pick, what do you think? Pick up, that's it. So we can pick up some, some food, right, from a supermarket. Splash, splash out on things. Good. Take, uh, take out a loan. Very good. Pay, pay off a loan. Very good. Snap, snap, snap up a bargain. Very good. And fork, fork out the money. And now let's move this. So a bargain, so, okay, so knock off an amount of price, right? We could say knock off an amount from a price, sorry. Uh, some groceries, some groceries in a supermarket, pick up, yeah? Someone is saying pick up some groceries. A loan or a mortgage? Give me the phrase on that, take, very good. Take, take out. Uh, so pay up front, yes. How about uh, on an expensive holiday? Give me the phrase of that. On an expensive holiday. Splash out, very good. And a lot of money on something unwillingly. You don't want to do it. Fork out, very good. So fork out and a bargain. Probably snap up, yeah, snap up the bargain. And one last activity for you. Okay, this is going to be two minutes. Uh, it's just revision, revision, and revision now. So what's the phrasal verb? Okay, it's a good fork out, okay? Uh, what is this? What do you think? Association, knock off, very good. You knock off money, that's it. How about this? You have... Not burn off a chic, but you have money to burn. You have money to burn, money to burn. Yeah. Uh, how about this? What do you think this could be? Uh, this is actually, okay, money to burn. This is actually uh, take out a loan, good, or paying in installments. Yeah, because we have payment terms or taking out a loan. Beautiful. How about this? Look at his, good, you could say dirt cheap, good, dirt cheap, Nadi, beautiful. What I had in mind was a ripoff, yeah, a ripoff, but dirt cheap, I like it. How about this? What's that? It's a bag that jumps. Uh, it's not a tick, it's a flea, so flea market. How about this? It's about paying. How much do you pay? You pay a lot. Good, but you have to be careful. You have to be careful because the whole point about using fixed expressions is that you have to use an arm and a leg. That's it. You have to use um, an and a. It's very, very important. So you pay an arm and a leg. Okay, this is an Apple Pro, um, you know, MacBook. So, um, it's actually, I splashed out on it, but I bought it in installments, okay? So, and how about the last one? Okay, she was shopping. It's just an expression, shop. Look, she's dead now. She's completely exhausted. Shop till you drop. 
shop till you drop. I hope you've learned something today. Um, I was trying to make it really, uh, really practical. Don't know how successful I was, but I really hope you got something from, from this.